You must receive a lot of questions from people in the spirit world and on earth. Mm. How do you prioritise the answering of these questions? <laughs> well, the truth is we do receive a lot of questions. Yeah. Obviously, we have spirits hanging around us all the time wanting to ask questions. And then on people with people on earth, yes, we do receive a lot of questions. And we receive questions via email, phone calls, in seminars. Yes. Yeah. And, and if we just even look at just the emails, you yeah. know, there's quite often in the course of a week, there's quite often hundreds of them. Yeah. So, and, and some of the emails are not just questions, they are often statements and other things all incorporated, yeah. which of course, uh, and many people will have for some reason a desire to send us long-winded explanations from their, you know, from their life. Uh, before they ask a question as well, which yeah. we find quite tiresome yeah. at times yeah. because, you know, obviously they're not just asking a question, they want us to engage personally in their particular situation yeah. and they don't necessarily believe we can feel them. Yes. So therefore they have, feel they have to explain everything. Yeah. But it is true we get asked a lot of questions. Yeah. And most of them, unfortunately, are selfish. Mm. Self-oriented, self-absorbed questions, basically about their personal life with no, no consideration for things outside of themselves. Um, so obviously that doesn't fit in any of the priorities <laughs> that we mentioned in question number one that we've just answered. Yeah. So the question was, how do we go about answering them? Well, well how, we do we answer, decide how do we decide? How do we decide? And the prioritisation of, of, of answering questions is exactly the same as the prioritisation of our life. Yeah. So if it fits into the priorities of our life, then we will probably answer the question. If it doesn't fit into the priorities of our life, yeah. then it will not. And we've gone through, we've just gone through in question number one yeah. of this session, all the priorities of our life, but let's go through them as they reflect to questions. All right. right. So, 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 so if someone asks this question about God, yes, they're probably highly likely going to get an answer. Yes. <laughs> 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 so that's almost a guarantee on that one. This yeah. is depending on a time, of course. That yeah, we have. and that's not probably something, a caveat we should put at the beginning of this. Because we're focusing on all those priorities we just talked about in question one, um, it does depend on the amount of time we have available because sometimes people who we do feel are quite sincere, who have a really good question, do email us, but we just unfortunately do not have the time. Or we've answered the question before in a different in a form. different form, yeah. Or and they just haven't found that question yet. Yes. We, and we're trying to do something about that. We're trying to make search engines and so forth so that yeah. you know people can find the answers to questions they have. Yeah. And there's all sorts of ways that we can accomplish those kind yeah. of things. Yeah. But yeah, questions about God. Um, if we need to, firstly, probably say too though that if a person asks us a question via email, yeah then it's highly unlikely they'll get a response anyway. Yeah. And the main reason why that is the case is because it is hard for us to answer questions via email for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. We spend very little time in front of the computer except to do uh, universal things. Yeah. So when I say universal things, like I spend very little time in front of my computer in front of the email. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time programming yeah. I spend a lot of time setting up websites, programming servers, sorting out, you know, how to manoeuvre clips from one place to another and all these other things that I've got to sort out. But I don't get very much time to actually sit down in front of the computer and actually answer emails one by one by one by one. Yeah. And usually the only emails nowadays that I finish up answering are the emails where I'm working with another group of people or I'm working with a person on a project mm -hmm. and we need to have some back and forth to sort some issues out and that's why I'm emailing. Um, yeah. It's very rare for me to be involved in emailing via and then answering questions via email. Yeah. And we should say that we've set up the Frequently Asked Questions email account and the Office email account mm -hmm. um, and we're doing a lot of things there to try and help just we have volunteers helping us to link people with information that's already been presented by us. Yes, in fact, we've made a recent rule that no volunteer should even answer a question. Yes. Because we feel quite strongly that if the material hasn't been presented, we need to present it yep. so that everyone can benefit. Yep. And if the material has been presented, all that needs to be done is refer them to the material. Yep. 
and uh, and so we're trying to even shorten the amount of time our volunteers spend exactly uh, in front in front of computers too because while they're in front of a computer they're not producing or creating yeah. and so this is we're focused on everybody who's involved with divine truth creating more truth and I suppose we want to encourage and support the people who volunteer with us to be able to have the same priorities as us correct so we don't want our volunteers sitting down in front of the computer answering questions seven days a week. No. We would like to see our volunteers at the most spending three days a week at the most, at the most in front of a computer and the rest of the time spending their time with their relationship with God and their relationship with the soulmate and all the other really important issues. And um, so, so we also find emails a very ineffective way of communicating. Yeah. Most people who email us um, have very little idea how to communicate very well mm. and then on top of that um, most of the time they misinterpret our responses quite easily because yeah. of their emotional condition yeah. so we find it a very ineffective method of communication and particularly ineffective when it comes to communicating truth yeah so yeah it's often funny isn't it because in the age of google you, where you can type in three words into a search engine and get like thousands upon thousands of you know hits of potential information to answer your question often people write us an email it takes them you know half a minute at the write. most to write yep. but if we were to engage with that lovingly to provide a full written response to that question it could take someone or ourselves a hours. whole day even. yes a whole day yes. even just to give them all the aspects of what they've asked yeah and yeah. that's why we try and create other material that can help answer questions and also empower people or give educate people in how they can discover the answers well, of course, the, the biggest way they can discover the answer is if they find and develop their relationship with God first. And that's not what a lot of people are doing. A lot of people want to come to us for answers all the time, but they don't want to develop their relationship with God first. Yeah. And we're saying to them, look, if you develop your relationship with God first, you will get the answer to every single question. Yeah. That's how I get my <laughs> answers to your questions, <laughs> by developing that relationship with God first. So if I get my answers to your questions, I'm certainly already getting my answers to my own questions. Yeah. And, and, and I suggest that every single person does that. Now, if the question is helping you develop your relationship with God, then certainly I will try to engage that yeah. question. Probably not by email, though. Yes. Probably by a recorded session like yes. we're having now. Um, email is, like I said, a very ineffective method of communicating. And it's also a one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. uh, even phone is usually one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Whereas, whereas if you put the answer up on a website or you put it up, uh, you know, in some public forum or something. Now it's one to many. Yeah. It's, it's more effective. So, so our friend Nikki has recently started a forum, mm -hmm. which is, by the way, the only forum that we feel we'll ever share on because of his terms and conditions, which we feel match our own terms and conditions yeah. with, inter with, with interacting with people. Yeah. You know, we're hi more highly likely to spend some time answering things there mm -hmm. where lots of people can see yeah. what's being said and done than answering something where somebody sends us an email privately because because m most people never hear it and never benefit from the answer yes there. And, and often the person you know depending on how open they are they might be open to the first five minutes of the conversation and then become overwhelmed and the next 20 minutes is sort of lost forever well, not um, lost forever. They might come back to it in two years' time and listen to it again and go, they oh, now I, <laughs> If they if recorded, recorded it. Yeah. Often, you know, now when we're having interactions with people on the phone or in person, I often say to them, do you have a Are recorder? Are you recording this? <laughs> <laughs> because it's going to help you much more to be able to listen to this in three days' time and in five weeks' time. And yeah. Whereas it, just now there's going to be a saturation point where a bunch of emotions get Triggered, triggered within you and... From then on, it's pretty much cactus. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> By the way, we should probably define that yeah, sorry. <laughs> statement because that's a very Australian colloquialism, isn't it? Um, well, it's it's pretty much not going to go very far beyond the prickles. And beyond <laughs> it's a big desert. Um, speaking from personal experience, there's and people used to laugh at me because when I first met you, I'd just have a notebook in front of me sometimes where I'd start writing things down because even 
it reaches a point where there's emotions coming up mm. and unless I go and feel and we have had many conversations haven't we where I say look I've got to come back and I go and have a cry and come mm. back and then we can speak more about what else is underneath mm. or what else, the furthering of that truthful lesson yeah certainly but sometimes even my auditory understanding of the words just goes out the window because it's like I'm still way back there on what you said three minutes ago and there's a process going on internally and, mm. and that frequently happens doesn't yeah. it where yeah. the process internally now dictates the person's ability to listen and really from that point it's pointless interacting with that person you know on a one-on-one -on -one level yeah. if you're in a group you can just still keep talking with the group which I often do yes but if I'm just interacting with that person on a one-on-one -on -one level I, uh, the thing I generally say to them now is look you're not hearing anything I'm saying now and and it might you know it's pointless speaking it while you're not hearing it yeah. you need to go away and feel about what I've already said and, yeah and then we'll work on what needs to be said <laughs> yeah. as well in addition to that in yeah. addition yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so basically getting back to our question how do we prioritize the answering of questions it basically depends on how they fall in our priority list that mm -hmm. we talked about in the first question. In so this let's series. say, let's look at the priority list quickly. Yeah. Questions about God, definitely want to answer them. Yep. Um, and, and in fact, we've got many questions we want to answer. Ironically, we find hardly any person asks any questions about God. About God. And yet that's our highest priority of questions <laughs> yeah. to answer. And yeah. God's laws and those kinds of things. Nature God's and God's nature. God's nature, God's personality, yeah. all of those kind of questions. And then there's questions about, um, you know, the soul mate, the soul union condition, the soul, you know, the progress of each half of the soul. And the progression in love, how one can progress in yes. love and truth. So anything about what is love, what is not love, what is, what is development of your will, what is mm -hmm. not, what is development of, you know, uh, of ethics and morality, what mm -hmm. is not, you know, those kind of questions attract us, certainly. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a higher likelihood we'll answer those questions. Um, so, so you can see that, you know, even questions about addictions and emotions and, and things like that, we will generally answer them because they do interfere with a person's relationship with God. And mm -hmm. if a person's truly sincere, we obviously want to answer those questions. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then as we go on down the, the list, there's things about the universal sharing of God's truth. And that's why, and sharing in groups rather than for individuals. And yeah, but if we look at the universal sharing, when people yeah. ring a, a phone us or email us and they're talking about, you know, setting up a learning centre somewhere, then obviously we'll possibly engage them. Yeah. But if we feel that they have no understanding of what they're even talking about, yeah. then we probably won't. Yeah. Um, because we feel that that person's not yet sincere and doesn't yet fully understand what's involved with regard to yeah. even running a centre or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, you know, obviously it just depends on the circumstance yeah. and each circumstance is individual. Yep. So we can't make a hard and fast, hard and fast rules. rules with all of these different issues. But you can see that if something doesn't fit into our personal, mm, our personal passions and desires or a part of that priority system, then given the time we have, it's highly unlikely we'll get around to answering that kind of question. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, look, that's really what we wanted to say on that question. Mm -hmm. um, just that we follow our own, you know, priority system and really we have limited time available, especially for written interactions beyond yes. that. It's important that people see that one-on-one -on -one interactions are not a proper use of our time if we have a universal or global desire Focus. to share truth. Yeah. And when people, a lot of people we feel get quite angry with us about not responding to their one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. In fact, we get quite a few nasty emails mm -hmm. after a person sent us what they believe to be a sincere response, yeah. a question and we do not respond to them. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even respond to them just because we haven't got the time to respond yeah. to them given our other priorities. They then start abusing us and now we definitely won't respond to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't understand even like, it's, it's interesting, people are very self-absorbed when it comes to the use of time. They send off very, like you said, very short emails, yeah. not understanding that the answer to that question might take hours and hours of written response mm. or even like half an hour of verbal, verbal response, yeah. which we've got to set up a recording like this mm -hmm. for 
and we've got to you know have people involved there's got to be a person switching the video editing the video getting it up on youtube there's all these different mm. things that are involved in all that a lot of technology and people have no real concept of what goes into answering their questions no uh, let alone their attempt to engage us on a one-on-one -on -one situation yeah. Yeah. you know that does take a lot of time and energy of our own that often we're better off spending in other pursuits to help more people than just one person. Yeah, and recently we have decided <laughs> that one-on-one -on -one interactions with people, we only want to have them with people who, as we said in our priority list, who are quite sincere and, and want to receive truth. But that more, they more than also that, the ones who have a direct desire that we can feel for God and their relationship with God. Yes. Yeah. And, and, are, and are fully in the stage of confronting their addictions, not yeah. people who make out they are. Yeah. And if we can feel they're being fake and facade Yeah. or, or facade is not even a word, <laughs> no, is it? But no. a fake, they're, pre they're presenting, presenting a fake facade, facade to us. Yeah. We're not interested in that. We can feel you. Don't yes. think you can get away with presenting a fake facade to us yeah. because we can feel you. Yeah. So we will tell you when you're being fake mm -hmm. and most of the time we'll be spot on. And usually when we are, the person responds with rage. Yeah. And that also indicates to us that, yes, that, that there's their facade now being triggered. And, and we're not interested in interactions like that. We want to focus on, does this person have a desire for God that's real? Yeah. Do, do they have a desire to love that's real? Yeah. Do they have a desire for truth that's real? Yeah. Are they humble? Do they really want to feel all of their emotions? Yeah. And there are people who don't feel their emotions who do really want to feel their emotions. Yes. And then there's some people who feel emotion, but they don't want to feel anything They're real. They're real emotions, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so the reality is we, we, where our priority system applies to every interaction. Yeah. And, and, and we do not ignore it. No. <laughs> and, and if other people want to ignore it, that's up to them. That's, yeah. They yeah. can ignore yeah. anything they want. Yeah. But, but they haven't heard us if they think that they can just have a fake interaction with us or make out they're interested in God when they're not. Yeah. And uh, because we can feel them when we interact with them. So we don't need, we don't even need to hear a lot of the words from them. Mm -hmm. We can feel their condition, feel what the issues are generally. And, and when they describe some of the life, then it becomes very accurate. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can even tell them what's going on in most cases. But we want to focus on the people who are sincere first because without those people, no one else on this planet is going to hear divine truth, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what I was going to say was even beyond that, beyond that's our criteria for personal interaction, we are now saying not only are those the requirements, but we want to, they have to agree to be recorded yes. so that it can benefit more Other than just them. People. Yes. Yeah. So even yeah. if we do have an interaction with an insincere person, yeah. at least it's being recorded and people may learn from it. Yeah. Whereas, whereas in the past, sometimes we've had lots of interactions with people not recorded. Nobody's learned from it. And yeah. even the person who we wasted the time spending it with didn't learn from it. Yeah. And, yeah. and we don't need to learn from it. No. We already know what we're talking about yeah. on those particular subjects. And so what all we needed to learn was to not engage those people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're doing that yeah you know? yeah because because yep. because there are a lot of spirits and a lot of people on earth who are fully focused on just wasting time yeah. and wasting our time yeah as much as anybody yeah. else's yeah. and yeah. we don't want to waste our time we're here for a purpose and a reason and we've got a pretty good idea what that purpose and reason is and yeah. we don't want to waste our time with pursuits that don't match those purposes yeah. that we have yeah mm. yeah yeah so even people who do have sincere questions that we we are still going to answer them in a way that benefits a lot of people and they yes. have to be willing to have the record of our interaction yes uh recorded and, and a lot public. aren't Many there are some aren't. sincere people who are sincere, but yeah. they, they, when it comes to truth, they're still scared of it. Yeah. And so they send us a question, but they say, they pre preface it with, we don't want you sharing this with anybody. We don't yeah. want you sharing our you know, details mm -hmm. with anybody. And we go, well, this person doesn't understand truth. Yeah. This person doesn't understand that everything is openly transparent in the spirit world and to God. Yeah. And this person needs to learn that truth, yeah. that everything's openly transparent. And until they learn that, there's little point in engaging that person, even if they have a sincere question. Yeah. If we feel that sincere question will benefit hundreds or thousands of others, 
then certainly we will answer it in an interaction like this, yes. but the answer won't be directed at them specifically. Yeah. Um, and that's the way we need to handle all of that. As we say, our time mm. is very precious to us and how we use it has to be very considered. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. Good day. <laughs>